keep silence before me, this being God speaking, O islands, and let the people renew their strength. Let them come near, then let them speak. Let us come near together to judgment, both at the seventh trumpet, as you can see in Daniel chapter 7, verses 9 and 10, as well as the great white throne judgment after the thousand years are finished. Who raised up the righteous man from the east, called him to his foot, gave the nations before him, and made him rule over kings. He gave them as the dust to his sword, and as driven stubble to his bow. This being in the past tense, according to the time this was written, meaning Abraham was the righteous man God brought out of what would become Babylon historically, which Cyrus would later be used to free Abraham's physical descendants from, which was a type looking forward to when Christ Jesus, who is Abraham's seed, singular not plural, would destroy the Babylon of the end times and gather those counted as good figs in Abraham's seed because they're part of God's family tree through Christ Jesus to Jerusalem when the first resurrection occurs at the seventh trumpet. He pursued them and passed safely, even by the way that he had not gone with his feet. Again, Abraham, as you can see pointed out in the Companion Bible, this being in reference to Genesis chapter 14. Who hath wrought and done it, calling the generations from the beginning, I the Lord, the first, and with the last, I am he. In particular, the generations from Abraham to Christ Jesus, and before Abraham was, I am, as Christ says in John chapter 8, verse 58, the sacred name, as you can also see in this fourth verse of Isaiah chapter 41. The isles saw it and feared, the ends of the earth were afraid, drew near and came, they helped everyone his neighbor, and everyone said to his brother, be of good courage. Upon witnessing the many-membered body of Christ flourish and overflow with God's blessings, the non-Christians out of fear banded together, obviously under the guidance of the Kenites and their four hidden dynasties that were globalized from 1830 to 1948. So the carpenter encouraged the goldsmith, the four horns, which are the four hidden dynasties in Zechariah chapter 1 being the negative to the four carpenters. So this is a carpenter in the negative sense because this has to do with the negative reaction to the spread of Christianity. Under Satan's direction spiritually, the Kenites and their minions began to build what will emerge at the woe of the fifth trumpet, which is what they call the New World Order. And he that smootheth with the hammer, him that smote the anvil, and in the Hebrew this is as smooth stones were used for lots, the stones worn smooth that come from the false rock, saying it is ready for soldering, and he fastened it with nails that it should not be moved. And ultimately Satan and his role of Antichrist completes the pyramid, so to speak, at 666 as the false cornerstone, when it goes from being a one-world political system to a one-world religious system. And at that time, most Christians will be grafted into Satan's family tree, ceasing to be Abraham's seed and becoming serpent seed by adoption when they worship Satan instead of Christ. But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend, meaning Israel spiritually, and in the futurist sense, only those of the seven thousands of Doc will remain Abraham's seed initially. In other words, they'll remain on God's family tree whenever Satan appears as the false Christ. But then once the Holy Spirit speaks through them, many will repent, whereby they can be grafted back into the true many-membered body. Thou, whom I have taken from the ends of the earth, and called thee from the the chief men thereof, and said unto thee, Thou art my servant, I have chosen thee, and not cast thee away. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded, they shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. Not only Satan's fallen angel locust army at the seventh trumpet, including those ten fallen angel kings, but also Satan himself and whoever chooses to follow him after the thousand years are finished. Thou shalt seek them and shalt not find them, even them that contended with thee, they that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Fear not, thou worm Jacob, and ye men of Israel, I will help thee, saith the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. And as far as the thousand years are concerned, Jacob is symbolic of those who must also become Israel, so to speak, as all were in the first world age, otherwise they won't be able to go into the eternity, which is the true promised land. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument, having teeth, thou shalt 
shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small and shalt make the hills as chaff. Thou shalt fan them and the wind shall carry them away and the whirlwind shall scatter them and thou shalt rejoice in the Lord and shalt glory in the Holy One of Israel. Christ being the stone written of in Daniel chapter 2 that destroys Satan's one world system which those four kingdoms written of in Daniel chapter 2 are ultimately symbolic of. The four empires that were types of the four beasts of Daniel chapter 7 with the Roman Empire being the fourth during which Christ died on the cross, beginning the gap of Daniel chapter 9 that ends with the woe of the fifth trumpet when Daniel's 70th week begins, which was seven years but is now five months. When the poor and needy seek water and there is none and their tongue faileth for thirst, I the Lord will hear them, I the God of Israel will not forsake them, I will open rivers and high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys, I will make the wilderness a pool of water in the dry land springs of water, that living water that flows from the true Christ who is the word of God, the truth of God's word that drowns out Satan's deception whereby many will repent before the seventh angel sounds being then able to take part in the first resurrection. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar, the shitta tree, the myrtle and the oil tree. I will set in the desert the fir tree and the pine and the box tree together. That seven which means spiritual completeness and many who are among the third part of the tree burn up at 666 when all six trumpets of deception began sounding at the same time will have upon repentance been restored to God's family tree whereby at the seventh trumpet the second death will have no power upon them when they're resurrected into eternal life as the good figs written of in Jeremiah chapter 24 that they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord hath done this and the Holy One of Israel hath created it this entire world age being created so that none should perish but that all come to repentance as many will decide to love our heavenly father and believe upon Christ Jesus whereby they can go into the third world age produce your cause saith the Lord bring forth your strong reasons saith the king of Jacob let them bring forth and show us what shall happen meaning the full triune Godhead let them show the former things what they be that we may consider them and know the latter end of them or declare us things for to come show the things that are to come hereafter, the true God continues to say that we may know that ye are gods, yea, do good or do evil, that we may be dismayed and behold it together. Behold, ye are of nothing, and your work of naught, an abomination is he that chooseth you. The king of Babylon of the end times, ultimately, who is Satan, once he appears in Jerusalem at the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial, with Cyrus, who we'll see in the next verse, being a type of Christ, who will upon his return destroy both Satan's role of Antichrist, as well as his one world system, including the fallen angels, including those ten fallen angel kings. Again, Christ is that stone in Daniel chapter 2 that destroys the image that symbolizes the Babylon of the end times. I have raised up one from the north, and he shall come from the rising of the sun. He shall call upon my name, and he shall come upon princes as upon mortar, and as the potter treadeth clay. And in the destruction of Satan's one world system in Daniel chapter 2, you see not only the gold, silver, brass, and iron destroyed, which are symbolic of the lion, the bear, the leopard, and the exclusively supernatural fourth beast of Daniel chapter 7, but also the clay is broken to pieces, which is symbolic of the fact that the one world system is a mix between flesh, humans, and supernatural entities. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, as you can see in Daniel chapter 2, verse 43, identifying what the clay is symbolic of. Who hath declared from the beginning that we may know, and before time that we may say, He is righteous. God having foretold of Cyrus 137 years beforehand, a type looking forward to what happens when the true Christ returns is King of kings and Lord of lords when the seventh angel sounds. Yea, there is none that showeth. Yea, there is none that declareth. Yea, there is none that heareth your words. With all flesh being destroyed at the seventh trumpet, they'll realize they had been deceived into worshiping the king of Babylon of the end times. The first shall say to Zion, or being better translated, God said from the first to Zion, Behold, behold them, and I will give Jerusalem one that bringeth good tidings, meaning the true Christ who Cyrus was a type of. For I beheld, and there was no man even among them, and there was no counselor that when I asked of them could answer a word. Behold, 
They are all vanity, that's emptiness, their works are nothing, their molten images are wind and confusion, which is what Babylon means, and again, it was the same area that would become the Babylon of old God brought Abraham out of, later using Cyrus to bring some of his physical descendants out of Babylon as a type, looking forward to when the true Christ returns and destroys the Babylon of the end times at the seventh trumpet. 